First of all, I want to congratulate uh, the Honourable Minister and the Governor of the Reserve Bank for um, curtailing the chaos that was on the black market uh, and making sure that the currency is steady. Uh, because they were able to deal with Macron uh, and I just want to suggest that they need to also deal with the abuse of foreign currency in the corporate sector. Let's take, for example, the 40% surrender requirements. Do the companies really require the other 60% in foreign currency? I don't believe they do. We need to get rid of this 40% surrender requirement and make it 100% so that the currency, foreign currency is managed from the central bank. If you go to South Africa, you cannot buy using the US dollar. You can't do it in Zambia, you can't do it in many economies. It only happens here. And why is it happening? Because we are allowing it to happen. We have just had the statistics that we have exported more than we have actually imported. We have uh, a, 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 a plus of more than $2 billion, which means we no longer need to have companies retaining foreign currency. My proposal is that the next budget must not allow this retention. And I want to give the House an example. Let's take the platinum miners, for instance, that export 200 million US dollars every month, plus or minus, and I'm not very far from the reality. 40% of that is 80 million. So they retain 120 million US dollars every month. Are they spending this 120 million dollars on new investment, or they are rushing to spend it because and that is the attitude in the corporate sector. So I believe we must just get rid of this tendency by making sure that the foreign currency is now managed by the central bank and nobody manages foreign currency. And in any case, this foreign currency is end out of the national resources. So we can't allow companies to make decisions on what happens with the bulk of the foreign currency that's end by the country's resources. Then I'm expecting in the budget, Honorable Minister, you spoke about uh, incentives to Manize and other bigger projects like that. We have a tendency to give incentives to big corporates. We want to create employment. There is no incentive for small businesses. There is no incentives for rural businesses. We would like to see, Honorable Minister, incentives to set up plans for value addition in districts. Let's have a fund that is reserved for every district to say for the resources available in this district, to import machinery, whether from China, India, or Germany, to value add, to value add on the minerals, to value add on the agricultural produce, and things like that. It's not happening. My incentive, Anungopi, work my big companies. For many years, Anungopi, Vawana, Delta, Vawana, Varun, Beverages, and all these kind of people, they are not going to create employment when we have a majority of people that are unemployed. Let's look at the value addition. We are producing a lot of gold. Where is the fund from the budget to promote value addition of gold, which could create employment in the jewelry industry? Gold went up Dubai. Gold went up India. Gold went up South Africa. We have no approach from the budget perspective that says let's invest in value adding this gold that we are producing. So I'm suggesting that the budget this year must have a provision for every province for setting up manufacturing factories for our resources, especially uh, the resources that are related to gold, which is readily available. And suggestion is a capacity fidelity. We are going around in circles with a system that was set up to serve a small industry that was white dominated. Mining is now everywhere by everybody who looks like me. So what we must do, let's make it easier for people to sell gold in Zimbabwe, not to Mozambique. I'm MP for Nyanga. They produce gold. My buyers are not either Gaere, Zaptotenga, and it can't come to fidelity. Those who fidelity kure. Why do we not have the budget in the next coming budget? Saying every financial institution licensed by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is now a gold buyer. So I don't want to take it. I don't want to take it. Some bank ripper to the narrow. You we capacitate the gold sector that way, so that it's easier for somebody in Bridge not to drive all the way in a risky way and a gold to fidelity.
other, I think it's a banking room by the bridge. So I propose, Honorable Minister, that the budget must have this provision that now says every financial institution licensed by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is now a gold buyer. It becomes their business to capacitate themselves in terms of skill and knowledge on how this can be done. Mvura. Excuse me, so uh, you have to, uh, to, 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 to give me a, 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 a minute more, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mvura, to celebrate an investment in Varun Beverages, because we have not a peps. So far, we have to bottle it Mvura, and yet we can bottle our own water and allow youths to be employed. Yes. Let's have a fund that says Kunyanga, Kunenyanga, any mountain, Kutomuda, Vraka, Chena, Sterek, spring water. We can't have Varun beverages, LG of China, to come and bottle water, which we can do by capacitating than do by bringing those bottling plants cheaply to, to, to sustain and create employment in our areas. I'm hoping that that budget will address that uh, perspective, Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable, Honorable Minister. Uh, Honorable Minister, I want to support Honorable Miliswa with regards to indigenization. I have no qualms. I don't care who owns my knees. Because in the absence of policy, they can do what they want. Because we have no policy. So they can own it, whether they are individuals, whether they are Chinese. Let's go back to community ownership on investment projects of significance in those areas. We have to bring it back in the budget in order to empower our people. It's a sad situation. An investor comes into this country. Chinese investor is an example. Everything, you know, supply where Ipapo has to be by another Chinese business person. My locals are getting nothing. Unless you are politically connected, you get nothing. So I think that it has to be addressed through policy and not any other way. Uh, we cannot, uh, we, I think I blame the government my investments. Let's create policy that allows, and the Honorable Minister, you can help us to achieve that. Finally, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. That is the same project. The Akunya Rakunyanga, the Wakuni Road, is not the Binya Road. The Akatanga, more than five years ago, the Brazilian resources, the Akatoa, and the Sok Cyclone, he died. You know, Bazan, the Atanga, three months ago, Bagango Vara Road, there is no activity. So what is the problem? Uh, treasury, there's no money that's being paid to the contractor. We have a bridge, which connects, which connects the Gares, people in Tangwena, and the people on the other side. That bridge, Rakato Wanemfura, is the only connection that we have between that community and uh, the rest of the, uh, of the country. That bridge, Rakato Wanemfura. Now we are going to the rain season. And it got zika during the rain season. Nothing has happened. When I asked the contractor, Treasury, Yakasunga play, there's no money coming through. Honorable Minister, Kumbira, budget revenue, Tipet, the projects at Takatanga, Majitai.